Hello everyone and welcome back to Mini Analytics. I'm very pleased to have you back once again. We are going to start yet another series and in this series we are going to be developing a machine learning uh, model that will be used to predict the remaining useful life uh, in uh, Betis. So this is a new series that we are going to start. In our previous uh, series I think we did one that uh, we predicted electricity bills. So this is an another series and in this again we are going to see how we can apply the different machine learning techniques, uh, the different machine learning tools to, to this so that uh, we are able to uh, develop this from an idea onto a functioning, a functioning uh, model. So brace for a new series of videos on this and again we are just going to start, uh, this is just the scoping part where I am trying to build some context into what you are going to be doing so this is just uh, uh, on that so it will be just a presentation part of it um, now the development part the coding part it will come later okay so uh, that's what we are going to be discussing under this uh, uh, the new under this um, uh, under this new project that uh, we are going to develop so again I'm very glad for your support so again, if you're new to this place, you can uh, make sure to subscribe to the channel, hit that notification bell so that uh, you never miss any of these uh, video updates that we are going to be releasing on this project and probably any other uh, video on uh, machine learning. Okay, so with enough said, uh, let's get started and see what we are going to be developing under this project. So uh, as I said, this is just uh, a a presentation of what we are going to be doing under this uh, uh, series while developing this uh, model. So as we all know, the lithium ion batteries are very important or are, are essential in the model technology uh, because of the uh, high energy density. And by the high energy density, this means that um, they can, they are able to store energy for quite uh, some time. Therefore, they are ideal when we are trying in a wide range of applications, such as the smartphones, all the way to electricity uh, vehicles, electric uh, vehicles. Sorry. So the performance of these uh, uh, batteries they degrade uh, with age, uh, and thereby they decrease, so, or we have a, a reduced capacity, and also an increased failure of risk. So therefore, that's why the machine learning uh, developing systems that accurately predicts the remaining useful life is very important. And this ensures that um, we, accurate, uh, we, we are able to schedule, let's say for maintenance, as well as uh, preventing unexpected uh, downtime. So we, we are trying to predict so that uh, we are able to avoid such, uh, such uh, challenges. Now, uh, there, there are obvious traditional methods that uh, are often used to try to predict this uh, remaining useful life. But uh, in most cases, we find that uh, these, these conventional methods uh, often involve extensive test, uh, testing or uh, empirical modeling. And uh, these steps are quite laborious and uh, very expensive. So that's why we can use the machine learning systems which offer a powerful alternative by enabling the development of uh, predictive models, models that can learn from uh, complex uh, patterns. So that's why we are, we are going to be applying uh, the machine learning techniques to develop such a model. So let's see some ad advantages of, um, of machine learning. So with machine learning, we are almost guaranteed in terms of accuracy by making these uh, predictions, so because our uh, data comes in, in uh, the data that we are handling is very complex, so the machine learning algorithms are able to handle this uh, complex re relationship between the features for making the uh, the battery predictions. Also, we are can uh, use the machine learning for real time prediction. Uh, scalability is also a factor that we need to consider and it works best with uh, machine learning as well as adaptive learning. This is all about uh, 
if there is any change in the environmental conditions, then the machine learning systems or the machine learning alg uh, algorithms are, uh, can adapt to that uh, new data and offer uh, accurate predictions uh, based on these uh, changes. Okay. So in our data set, this is uh, our data set uh, for, the stud for our study. Uh, the data set we are going to analyze uh, 14 NMC LCO 18650 batteries. So that's that was the sample uh, sample sample batteries that were used for the uh, analysis and with a nom nominal capacity of about 2.8 ampere hours. So the batteries were subjected to control discharge uh, charge cycles. So they were charged and discharged so that uh, we are able to understand the degradation patterns. Then. Um, that uh, charge and discharge cycles, they underwent about a thousand control discharge and uh, charge cycles. Then uh, during the uh, discharge phase, the batteries were discharged at, at the rate of, uh, I think this is 1.5 coulombs, so 1.5 times its capacity per hour. Then uh, while during uh, doing that charge and discharge uh, uh, cycle, the voltage and current behaviors were monitored through each cycle to capture the degradation pattern. Now, the data from that we are going to use now to, uh, to make these uh, predictions. So, other variables include the cycle index, uh, discharge time, time for specific time at specific voltages. You will see that uh, the changing times as well as the remaining useful life. Uh, okay, so the remaining useful life will be our target variable. That is what we are going to be predicting. And the goal is to use a supervised machine learning to predict the remaining useful life of uh, these batteries. So to see how the data set was built, then uh, you can just follow this link and you'll see, I'll, I'll show you. So you'll see how the data set was built until we obtained the final data that we are going to be using uh, to develop uh, this uh, model. Okay. So this table shows you the different features that we are going to be using in this uh, uh, while developing this model as you can see we have the variable and the description so as you can see for example the cycle index these are the number of cycles each battery has undergone so you will see that we also have the discharge time the time at specific voltage which is a uh, uh, 4.15 volts so this is the time spent at a specific voltage during the discharge cycle all the way you can see the total time charging time uh, minimum voltage charge Okay, so those are the variables that you are going to be using to try to predict now. Uh, let me use try to predict the remaining useful life for these uh, batteries. Okay, so uh, and lastly on this, it's about the project structure. So this is the project structure that uh, we will be uh, implementing. So in the previous uh, video, what we did was just we had our data and our data was just stored in a, in a local storage, the local uh, machine. But in this case, that we will be now storing our data in a MongoDB server. Then from there, we'll query that to at least uh, able to read data from that uh, MongoDB uh, uh, server. And we're going to feed that into our system. And then these other systems will uh, come into play. So we'll also do a data analysis part. And in the data analysis, what essentially what we will be trying to do is all about trying to find the best alg uh, algorithm that we're going to use, uh, probably cleaning our data, all those all those sort of things will be had will be handled under the data analysis. But the goal or the intention uh, the, the intention for that will be trying to select the best uh, algorithm that uh, will give uh, the most accurate predictions okay? or, um, or the most fulfilling predictions, something like that. Okay? So our structure, uh, inside the model itself, we also have a data extraction. So if, when we are dealing with the model itself, we'll now, instead of going through the data analysis, we'll just uh, uh, read data from the MongoDB server direct. So for that, for that case, we'll just de uh, do this. Eh? So we'll just read our data uh, from the server directly. We won't go through this step. So that one will we will uh, remove. That step will uh, we won't we won't go through this step when uh, building our model itself. 
this is just um, a step uh, that will enable us. So essentially, it's something like you're trying to build a base model, something like that. Uh, trying to fit, see which one algorithm will work best. Uh, if I do certain type of cleaning of data, how, how uh, what are the results uh, am I getting? For example, if I use a standard scalar or a minimax scalar, what type of results uh, am I getting? All that will be done under the data analysis. So after we select the best algorithm and probably the best uh, uh, data transformation uh, techniques, then we'll just, instead of going this route, we'll just uh, query uh, data from the MongoDB database and then continue with everything in the pipeline. So that is all about the data extraction. So we'll do uh, a data validation. This is all about the schema, uh, see, seeing if we have the correct data type or the correct number of columns in our data. Then uh, data preparation. So whatever we did in the whatever we did in the data analysis segment is what we are going to repeat again in the data preparation or the data transformation. Then we'll do a model training. Then I will do a model evaluation. Uh, um, Model training are just fitting our data to uh, the learning algorithm. Then the model evaluation is all about uh, uh, using new and seen data to see how our model tries to generalize. To gener generalize. Then after that, we'll do a model uh, registry. This one we'll, we are going to be using. We'll try to use MLflow to try to register our for model registry as well as uh, exper experiment tracking. So we'll try that using the ML flow. Then once after that, we'll have our train model. Then we are going to use our train model to do the predictions. Then we we'll also do some performance monitoring to see, to able to, uh, so that uh, we ensure that our model is, uh, uh, is yeah, our train model is uh, working well. Okay, so that is, it will be all about the perf performance uh, uh, monitoring. Okay. So that's what we are going to be doing under this project. So I saw it best to maybe introduce it to you so that you have a general scope of uh, what we are going to be uh, discussing. So that's it. So uh, expect that in this uh, entire series. So the next thing after this is all about uh, setting up a database under the MongoDB. So see you in the next one. So uh, before we get to the uh, before we get to how we can set up our database in MongoDB, let me just show you. Uh, so from my data, I obtained my data from uh, uh, Kaggle. So I'll make sure to leave the link from where you can also obtain uh, the same data. So this is the data that uh, we are going to be uh, using, and this is the site that um, you can obtain uh, the data. So I'll make sure to leave the link so that you can also get the data uh, from the same then uh, and for the for how the data set was built so you, again i think it's this uh, you can just follow this link then uh, it will bring you to some uh, to this uh, github and from here uh, you can see how the data set was uh, built so i didn't i didn't want to go in much into this because uh, i realized that this is a domain specific and it's quite intensive work. So if you have uh, such people dealing uh, with batteries uh, and all that, then maybe they can develop. So for this case, uh, such uh, such guys dealing in, in, in that field, they developed the data set. So, so the source of the data set, you can see this is the source of the data set, uh, batteryarchive.org. So this is the source. This is the source of the data set. So let's just wait. Uh, but in the meantime, as this is loading, uh, let's just open this again. So from uh, this uh, GitHub uh, repo repository, then you you are able to see how the data preprocessing part, how it was achieved. So if you just uh, read through, you, are, you can be able to uh, understand that. Okay, so that is all about the, this is the data set, I think so. So they obtained this data set, then they did some uh, data preprocessing steps to come up 
now with the final data set yeah. so if you just read through you uh, you can uh, you will be you can able to find more on how the data set was uh, built okay so i didn't want to spend much uh, of our time under this uh, section let's just go to the mongodb uh, see how we can um, create a, 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 a database under the uh, uh, mongodb so with mongodb they are, they are giving um, they are, or they are offering uh, a free tire that uh, you can use so again if you don't have an a mongodb uh, account you can just create one so as for me i did create one so you can use the try free then you can set up an account and i think they'll give you about 500 gb of uh, space okay so for us for my case let me just uh, i will sign in then uh, see how we can create a database or a cluster or something like that okay so let me uh, log in So you can create your also for your case just create a new account if you don't have or if you have you can just a uh, login then uh, if you you are creating this for the first time uh, and give it uh, some time yeah so if you are creating this for the first time then uh, there is there is uh, you you will you will, you are able to create a cluster so for my case i already have created a cluster so you, you will first uh, create a cluster and when you cl click at that button uh, create a cluster you are going to be brought to a page like this okay so you have the serverless dedicated or shared so i think it will be dedicated but i have already used or i'm using the the free tire where you are given a i think it is 500 gb of uh, space so so you will create one then uh, create the cloud provider aws uh, uh, google cloud or microsoft azure then uh, from there it's just simple cluster tire you can just select that then i uh, think in the free tire you are not given uh, uh, these um, options but it's just simple then you can now create your cluster so after creating your cluster uh, you now you will then come back to such a page like this okay then uh, i'll just go to my uh, my database so you can see i've created the way you can now create your database so you can go to browse collection where you will see your di the different database or at this point you can now uh, create your database so you can just uh, for example click the button create the database then you will pass in the database name as well as the collection name that uh, you want and then uh, additional preferences this is all about how you're going to uh, store your data in the database okay so it's just as simple as uh, as that okay so once you have created your database for example this is the data that uh, we are using for this project the battery rule uh, this is the data that you are going to be using in this uh, database so once you have created your database um, uh, you will uh, uh, once you have created your database now it will be time to now uh, upload or, or uh, upload data into your database so to uh, upload data to your to your database so for example let's say we have downloaded this data and we want to upload our data to now the mongodb cloud uh, database then uh, what you can uh, do so if you go back to the overview uh, then uh, you'll have this uh, you'll have this uh, interface then you can click the button connect and in the, in the connect you are given different options that you can use to upload data to your database so for my case uh, i have been using the the compass so this you just download or you can uh, have the mongodb a compass this is just something like a, a graphical user interface it's quite easy to to use 
so you can just download it uh, download uh, the compass and after you download and and install then uh, you'll come to such a page so it will have an application like this so the mongodb compass so once you have uh, so let me uh, first open it so once you have the mongodb compass then the next thing will be all about uh, the next thing will be about now uh, you need to connect the the mongodb compact uh, compass to your database so for that to happen then you need go to go back to your database then uh, under the connect then compass then you need to just copy this link and remember we have something like a password here so when you are when you are creating your cluster you'll be asked to provide something like a password okay so that password is the one that you, you will be uh, replacing the password here so i'll copy this link then uh, just um, enter the url under this password now you are going to enter that uh, password so i'm going to do the same i'll enter my password So after you have uh, entered your password, uh, but authentication, let me repeat the same. So let me enter my uh, my password. So I think. Let me repeat the same so I entered uh, then after that when we uh, click connect then you will have you will connect now to your database okay so after that this is where it's very easy now handling your, your database from here so for example if I want to I can create a new collection name here uh, for example let's say Betsy let's say it data then we create a collection here then if you want to upload your data then you can just go to import uh, data then you go to the section where you have saved your data for example if this was the data for example then you can just say select then uh, it will upload your data to the mongodb server so i'm not going to upload this one so i'll just cancel it okay then i'll just uh, delete this one I'll just drop this collection. So look at the data. Okay, so we are going to drop that collection. So basically, that's how you can uh, uh, load or report data to your MongoDB server. So uh, the data that you're going to use is uh, this one here. Okay, so this is the. I think with MongoDB is a no SQL. Uh, uh, database i think i think that is the free option that you can use so this is the data that uh, we are going to be using for our uh, uh, for developing the model itself so instead of uh, develop, instead of uh, storing your uh, uh, data uh, in in the local machine uh, then you can store it into the cloud again this one is an uh, a cloud uh, database so you don't need to download the mongodb server to your local machine so you can just use this one then uh, so this is the data that uh, we are going to be using for this uh, analysis so with this i just wanted to show you how you can uh, create a database with the uh, mongodb using the free uh, the free tire then um, i think by now you following those steps you are able to uh, download the data and maybe so the data so the next step will be about the data analysis so we'll see how we can query in such a way that uh, we can uh, read data from the mongodb server then from there start the process of data analysis the process of selecting the best algorithm uh, the, uh, and all steps and all other steps under that okay so that's it for for this one so you can also do the same follow the 
So just simple instructions you can just follow through and you, you can able to achieve a similar uh, thing. So that's it for this one. See you in the next one where we start uh, data analysis.